This is a Chinese LED home theatre projector which uh, some poor sod purchased off of eBay for well on the package it says 430 US dollars the current going rate for these seems to be about 150 to 200 dollars plus shipping and in light of that uh, when we got this thing in at work for repair and the customer was uh, informed of its rather dangerous interior he just chose not to spend any money on repairing it and just getting another one instead so here it is I brought it home instead of putting it in the scrap heap and I figured we'd take it apart to have a bit of a giggle at the inside of it. So these things are advertised as 2800 lumens, 800 by 600 or in Chinese terms 1080p capable. So, so it's going to have something like a 50 watt LED inside. It comes delivered with an actually reasonably nice feeling remote. No complaints there. And pretty tactile and nice buttons on the top. So actually the external build quality of this thing isn't all that bad. It's a bit plasticky but it really gets uh, an okay grade. Around the back however it gets a bit dodgier. It's supposed to have an H HDMI and USB port there but uh, that's on a board that I've popped into the unit since I took this apart and to diagnose it at first. We've got the power Cautions. Please read the manual careful before using the projector. It's also got a VGA input component. Apparently, it says DTV ATV, so it's probably got a digital tuner. I suppose that's a nice touch. And a USB port for something else. So let's uh, reveal the horror by actually lifting the lid off of this thing. So, uh, for starters, this board was actually quite well mounted into the device. It's supposed to sit like that, but I took it out in order to get a better look. It's got some processory thingy going on, lots of connectors interfacing. A HDMI extension, which leads further down into the case. If we flip the unit on its face, we can get a glimpse of the LED driver, which is, actually seems to be of somewhat reasonable quality. And the LED heatsink module in the back here with its little fan and all the rest is just optics leading the light out of it. But uh, the real uh, killer in this unit is the power input. Because if we look inside it, we've clearly got a 3-pin power connector where the ground simply isn't connected. And the entire plug is uh, just hot glued into the case from the inside. So, if you were to press a plug just a bit too hard into this thing, the uh, power connector would pop inside of it. And uh, that could potentially cause some rather hazardous situations since you've got 230 volts with no ground floating around in the unit. And that's certainly not made better by the exposed metal parts here. Once you get this far in the disassembly, the entire thing basically just uh, pops apart on you. This box is uh, very modular in design, which I suppose is a pretty nice touch. It comes apart very easily. This mate was uh, also broken from the factory, which is even better since that would mean that you could theoretically just uh, yank the power cord out and get the panel along with it. Back here we've got some uh, round thing hot glued in. Perhaps this is for another model where they had an incandescent bulb of some kind or gas discharge bulb where you're supposed to pull the bulb out. Uh, this is just my pile of screws from earlier. Down here we've got uh, a USB plug hot glued in place. I believe this is a bracket for holding the LED in place, also removed earlier. And we'll get some more detail on the horrific power plug. This is this is just really, really bad. They have installed it quite firmly. They've used strong hot snot, but yeah, I'm not okay with that. I'm definitely not okay with that. These are just the standard 
laptop style speakers I would almost say if they're too big for a laptop cheap TV speakers probably do a decent enough job and this is the actual LED module with uh, a prerequisite thermostat on the back why is that a PTC? Uh, it almost looks more like a PTC actually but uh, I, that's connected in series with the LED so it's clearly pr protecting the LED and here's the LED itself it seems to be a pretty standard I would say 50 watt LED because we've got uh, six strings of eight uh, chips in series which I suppose is a bit unusual and a common thing to have 10 in series but uh, th this LED is the uh, failure point of this projector I've tested it with the lamp power supply and it simply does not light although if I just look at it uh, up close it uh, really doesn't have any obvious flaws it's really weird actually it looks like a healthy LED yeah, this looks like a pretty healthy LED visually to me at least no obviously exploded parts in it I think that, I think that is just some dirt on the surface yeah no broken bonding wires or anything but uh, when I tested this at work it simply would not light it was showing completely open circuits no matter what you did to it and yeah, if we hook up to it it's got a bit 30 volts across it 35, 36, 40 this thing is uh, entirely open circuit no life in it whatsoever yeah, it won't even light if we PSV substrate are we getting some light there? whoa! ouch! okay, so it seems we've actually got a bonding wire failing on this thing which kind of makes sense because we have these little ballers there on the bonding wires so if I just uh, poke around there, is it going to light? Well, it's the, all the dice are clearly okay because uh, that did not lit up quite fiercely, I must say, and that was uh, 32 volts at uh, 30 milliamps. Ouch, my poor eyes. So let's see, maybe. Oh! Oh, yeah. That's. That's an odd failure mode. It seems the bonding wires are just. Uh, come loose off of the actual LED connector because if I just press my finger there I can make those light up very reliably 21.5 volts at uh, 30 milliamps it seems hmm that's weird I've certainly never seen a power LED fail like this before you know with zoom right in there you can actually see how that little ball for a hand the bonding wires just let go. I wonder what's caused that. But the metal work around the LED seems to indicate that it's run very hot, so perhaps it's just overheated it with time. But uh, it almost seems as if there's been a little spark where they've let go, which has just uh, pushed the uh, potting compound out of the way. Hmm. Very odd failure mode, anyway. I wonder if we can just uh, jab a soldering iron in there and uh, fix this LED. Let's just try jabbing it once with a really hot, really big tip. I am quite certain this is not the way you are supposed to do this. In fact, I'm quite certain you are not supposed to attempt repairing broken power LEDs in the first place, to be honest. Whoop, hang on! We got one ray to light. We are just pressing about it while it was powered and it seems to have re-welded itself. If I just poke it lightly it's probably going to go off again. But we actually have a life in one row there. It's, uh, well, that's certainly alive. Ah, there it goes. <laughs> okay, I think I officially ruined it there. Moving on from the LED, we can just uh, keep taking this thing apart, I suppose. The front panel seems to pop off just like the rear panel with a, a couple of screws around the bottom. Now that uh, reveals our LED drive board and the power supply. 
and that's the power supply board out. Which uh, actually looks to be of relatively decent quality. I seem to have caused myself some damage. Oh well. Capacitors, random Chinese brands, of course. So, here's the piece of all stuff. Why we've got the mains in, but going for one of these miniature fuses there. Not too big a fan of those. Common mode choke, XCAT app. Another common mode choke, rectifier. That's actually not too bad. Isolation seems to be quite reasonable, actually, although. Yes, that. Yeah, that, that, that's a no-go there. We've got a little SMD cap acting as the uh, Y cap, the IF suppression cap from the primary to the secondary. <laughs> uh, that's, that's not okay. But other than that, really, they've done an excellent job with uh, isolation. We've got a very clear mains to secondary uh, isolation, although, yeah, there we go, another SMD cap pretending to be a Y cap, and that's just a snake tracing over there. And nope, that's not okay. Really miniature, minuscule primary secondary isolation fan. They've even got some tin splatter <laughs> between here. Oh, oh dear. And with the, with the lack of grounding in this thing, that's definitely an issue. This thing certainly was a death trap from the beginning to the end. Bit of a shame though, it really had some potential going. Oh, I really need to take care of that wound. Ouch. Moving on. We seem to have uh, some form of a trimmer pot there, right by the LED output. So perhaps this is actually the current adjustment. It does make sense because we seem to have a, a current shunt there. No, I'm not entirely certain what. Uh, power rating this thing has. It says uh, 28 volts, 12 volts there, which uh, makes sense since we had an 8 LED die 2013. But uh, the power rating of this thing really is a mystery. I think the entire device is rated for 110 watts or so. But what the actual LED output would be is uh, a bit of a mystery. Moving further along, the optics seem to pop out with uh, just another few screws. This board up here is uh, like a T-con board or something along those lines. It uh, went to the input board and I think it goes on down to the actual... Yep, it goes down to the LCD panel which is uh, hiding in there. So I guess we'll get to have a look at that in due time we need to get this thing out of the box first. I'm not entirely certain as to whether or not I'm ever going to reassemble this thing. I already have a projector, this thing will need a new LED and it's really just a rather nasty unit. I mean it's an 800 by 600 projector. Not particularly impressive. The Chinese specified it for a 2000 to 1 contrast, so I don't want to know what the real contrast ratio of it is. Probably not too impressive. There we go. Optical. Oh, hello. Is that a USB to HDMI converter? So we've got uh, an extension USB lead leading to the rear panel of the unit, and we've got the uh, a HDMI lead coming out. That's really curious. I do wonder what that is. We've got a couple more USB plugs and uh, what seems to be a power connector. Which seems to be connected onto one of the USB plugs. This almost has to be some kind of like a TV stick thing which uh, you would normally just stick into the back of your TV. It certainly seems to be of that format, and you've got an SD card slot and a bunch of USBs on it. And I guess that leaves us with just the uh, optics module left to take apart, so I would wager we've just got some kind of light guide there for the LED, 
we've got the LCD panel there quite obviously and we've ha we have to have some form of mirror to guide the light out of the lens assembly in the front there which uh, seems to be permanently attached to the front bezel. Now that's the control board exposed right there and uh, this is a very anonymous chip just says uh, BK6818 we've got a trimmer there just to yeah, generic LCD drive stuff. Some chip there with a very long number. Won't go into that. We'll just get rid of this for the time being. Less risk of breaking the panel accidentally while we tear this thing asunder. So the light guide should pop off if we just remove these screws. And that's apparently just a rear cover. Okie dokie. Yeah, let's just uh, keep taking its screws. The entire optical assembly seems to pop into an upper and a lower half. So I guess that's uh, the next thing that's going to happen. I should note that the quality of the plastic in this thing is just horrid. It just feels... it almost feels as if it's, the entire thing was 3D printed. It's just very... oh, that's the uh, panel. Hello. That's the LCD panel. Huh. That's fancy. Little tiny LCD panel. This thing is definitely not very high res. You can actually see the individual pixels on it uh, with a naked eye. Although it seems to have an aspect ratio of widescreen. I mean, it doesn't look 43. So perhaps it's uh, something like a 1280 by 720 ish thing. It's definitely not full HD, I don't think there are small enough pixels for that in it. But we'll uh, put that aside. Oh wow! Huh. On the other side it's really dirty. Really dirty. Which makes sense since the entire optical assembly is ventilated. We've just got to some uh, dust filters preventing, dust, preventing dirt entry, so... That's not really the best design. The longer you run the projector, the more dust it's going to gather, the less sharp it's going to be, and the less light it's going to put out. Hmm. Need to keep in mind that these cost less than $200. Except for this one, which apparently cost $430. Is this going to pop into two parts? Yeah, but it's uh, glued shut with these uh, dust filter things. You can see a Fresnel lens in there. Yeah, these dust filters are not going to survive being taken apart. There we go. Oh, there's another fan in there. That's curious. Where's that? Yeah, there. Hmm. There we go. Another fan. What's the brand of these anyway? It's actually shock mounted. That's nice. It's a cooling fan. <laughs> Have you ever needed a cooling fan? Well, now you've got a DC, DC brushless cooling fan. And that's the optical assembly right there. Is this uh, lens going to pop out? Yes, it is. Oh, well, that's a proper magnifying glass. Hello. Ooh. Ooh. This entire thing is just one solid piece of glass. Yeah, the uh, zoom or focus, it has to be focus uh, setting, is just a, a thread in the uh, plastic casing. Yeah, so the entire thing goes in and out. Well, that's kind of neat, I guess. It's not the most mechanically sturdy solution, and it seems the casing has... Uh, yeah, that's cracked. That's suffered shipping damage, I'd wager. Definitely an issue. Oh, well, as long as you don't move this thing around, I suppose it won't cause you any grief, but, yeah, that's... that's not as it's supposed to be. I really like this lens though. That's 
That's really cool, just look at that. Pretty proper magnification. Ha! That's worth scrapping this thing for. I've got more use for this as a magnifying glass than I do the entire projector. This actually seems to be a relatively high quality piece of optics. It's very heavy in your hand. It's definitely glass and not plastic. Not bad at all. I quite like that. Probably higher quality optics than in the camera I'm shooting this with. And here are the rest of the optics. We've got, uh, seems like a plastic Fresnel lens there. And is uh, that another plastic Fresnel lens? While you pop out. Yep. That looks like a Fresnel lens, alright. Focusing my T5s. And another one in the back, it seems. Is that also going to... That looks like a Fresnel lens. Fresnel mirror vision. And that's pretty much some... The optics up, I won't bother removing that, it's just a mirror. And uh, the stuff in the back is clearly just mirrors as well to focus the light of the LED a bit better. And uh, I think that's about as much as this thing is ever going to come apart. So, uh, with no further ado, let's uh, try and hook that weird input board thing up to a computer and see what it does. And if I just uh, hook it up straight to my computer, it shows up as an RK30 SDK. Which, uh, googling that uh, doesn't really yield much useful results, uh, except for this uh, apparently being some kind of Android tablet type process, and it also gives you a few, I believe, Spanish reviews of some Android USB TV stick thing, which uh, seems to have a similar form factor to this, so, hmm. Perhaps it's some uh, China special Android device that's actually powering this. Alright, I've uh, hooked it back together to such an extent that it uh, should at least do something when you power it on. Uh, I'm not entirely certain as to how it's supposed to go together because these connections are very ambiguous, ambiguous but uh, I think we might have a fair chance. It shouldn't go up in smoke anyway. We also, of course, don't have the LED connected up because that's entirely unnecessary. We have an IKEA lamp providing backlight instead, so let's uh, flick the switch and uh, see what goes up in smoke. Well, I guess it helps if you hook the LCD up the right way around. I've never before seen a flat flex which goes in with the uh, pins facing upwards. Anyway, let's go again. Hmm, well, that's a difference. Red. Green. Blue, black, white. Okay, it's certainly doing some kind of power on test thing. Can we get it to actually do anything? Hmm, it seems pretty dead. It's obviously stuck in some kind of a test mode. But uh, what that means is an entirely different story. No, I've tried everything. I tried shoving a signal into it and powering the stick otherwise and checking the feed voltage for the entire thing. It seems I killed it when I hooked the LCD up backwards. Whoops. So I guess the only thing left to do is just uh, hook the Android HDMI stick thing up to a monitor and see if it'll do anything. And yes, it really is a stick because the wire supplied is a HDMI extender and the stick has a HDMI mail connector on it. Hmm, this is in no way, shape, or form repurposed. No, we do have some picture TV box. TV box. Well, that certainly looks very Android indeed. We've even got Google Play Store going there. Wi-Fi network available. Hmm. Well, I have no clue whatsoever of how to use this thing. Uh, I certainly don't have a touch screen. It's probably intended to be used with a remote somehow. 
But I... There's no way to hook that up. Hmm. What if it's awkward just to shove a mouse into the USB ports on this thing? Hey, there we go. I've got a mouse pointer. Whoops. I've got to censor that. Your tablet will shut down. Yes, my tablet certainly will shut down. I do not know how to use this thing, but this is clearly just some kind of Android TV stick thing, which works just fine standalone. Fair enough. So there you go. One cheapo China lethal LED pro projector in a million parts. I don't think I'm going to bother putting this thing back together, especially since I apparently uh, ruined it by hooking the LCD panel up backwards. Whoops. Anyway. So I suppose the most interesting thing to come out of this thing was probably that giant optical thing. Which just seems to make a an F slash nothing super macro tilt shift um, lens to put in front of stuff. So I guess that's kind of cool. But beyond that, pretty crappy. Uh, oh well. I hope you found this enlightening or at least in the least interesting. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. I mean, if you'd happen to want any of this stuff, like the little Fresnel lenses or the Android stick or the LED heatsink or something, and you don't mind paying European postage for it, uh, don't mind leaving a comment because I really have no use for any part of this except for the giant lens thing which I am keeping for myself. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Perhaps the stick might be of interest to someone. Holy crap, check out the macro. I can get if I stick the projectile lens on top of my video camera. That's the tip of a Philips 2 screwdriver. That's pretty cool. That's the edge of a CD. Just a snaking its way off in the distance. Here's the LED we were playing with before. The individual dies. Wow, look at that reflection, reflection when I tilt them. Eternal blue. That's weird. That's really weird. That's my solder gooping. I never shifting red. Huh. That's an odd phenomenon.